We are back on Get Up. We are two days away from the start of week one of the college football season. And the great Paul Feinbaum has joined us here to take a look at some of the bigger games and some of the bigger teams. So let's do a little over under with the regular season win totals, Paul. Okay, so folks who are getting ready to get this thing started. How about Alabama year one post Nick Saban? Their total is nine and a half wins. Would you go over or under on that number? Greeny, I would go over. Not by much. Uh, I think they're a 10 and 2 team. Uh, they've got a bunch of tricky road games at Oklahoma, at LSU, and of course uh, at Tennessee, Georgia at home. But I think I think they can split the difference. They find a way to get 10 wins with Jalen Milrow. That should be enough to certainly put them in contention for the playoff. Let's go to last year's national champs. Paul, the over-under on Michigan is eight and a half wins. How do you like it? I think they can do better, not by much again. Vegas has a, has a, has a purpose to their method uh, here. So I think they get to nine wins. Probably the most important game of the year for them, interestingly, isn't at the end against Ohio State. It's early, second week of the season against Texas. They need to win that game, I think, to, to make the playoffs. Uh, but they're, they look like a nine-win team, so they're barely over that eight and a half. Yeah, that might be the most interesting of the many interesting early season games. And let's go to Dion's team. We talked a lot about him yesterday. They're going to be on the field actually Thursday night. Their total is five and a half wins at Colorado. Paul, you like over or under? Amazing we're spending this much time talking about a team with an over and under of uh, five and a half. But I think they get over. I don't think they get over by very much. I think they'll get by Thursday night, although that is a tricky, tricky game. Martin, look, the reason we're talking about it is because it's Deion Sanders. He is one of the great lightning rods and one of the great sport uh, heroes, I should say, great stars that we've had in sports in generations. So you and I, Paul, and, and many of us here were talking at great length about the situation at Colorado yesterday where they have banned the columnist who has been very critical of him and of the program from asking any questions at press conferences. Yesterday, that came up on first take, and Stephen A. and Shannon Sharp had divergent and extremely interesting opinions. I want you to hear them both. I do not agree with how the Colorado program has handled the situation. And quite frankly, I'm a bit disappointed because you have to have thicker skin than that. If you don't want to talk to the reporter, Shannon, don't talk to the reporter. But to have the program putting out a release announcing that we're not going to take questions as a program from this guy is utterly ridiculous. He used the phrase false prophet, deposition Dion, planet prime, Bruce Lee of BS, Dion Kool-Aid, and circus. That's personal. If you want to talk about my program, if you want to say I'm not doing a good job of coaching, if you want to say that I don't, I don't do a good job of disciplining my players and my players are not disciplined and they're not playing foot the game the right way, I can live with that. But when you start to attack me personally, nah, I'm not going to answer your questions. So I thought that was a really interesting and, and, and two people whose opinions I respect. And I, and I think it's worth noting Stephen A., because I think it is in his DNA, sort of came at it from a reporter's perspective because that's where he began. Right. And Shannon came at it from a player's perspective because that's where he began. And now they meet, you know, on the stage in the middle of it all. But I wanted to get Dominique and Bart in on this as well. Nick, as, as you have heard this debate. I mean, the, the Colorado chose to make this into the topic that it has become by making this public in the way that they did. What are your thoughts, Nate? Yeah, I mean, Dion's not silly. He's been around media for a long time. He knew this is what was going to happen, and I assume that this is what he wanted to happen because, like Paul said, we're not talking about how good this team is, if they've overachieved or underachieved. We're talking about Dion in a feud with the media member, and we're talking, we're hyping up this game that is now becoming more and more interesting. Like, Dion is a, uh, uh, he understands how important it is to be a character. Now, whether we want to, like, crush him on the decorum of the situation. Like, I agree wholeheartedly. That's not how you react to that. But when you write about someone, when you talk about someone in their face or not, there could be repercussions for it. And the repercussions is that Dion is, can, he's free to say, I don't want to speak to this person. We're not going to speak to this person. And then the responsibility is on the media members around them to support this guy and make sure that there is a cost paid by Dion for doing this. Because right now, there's not going to be a cost. And if you made it to 2024 and you think that decorum is going to create, is going to create the pressure to make <laughs> public figures behave in a way that you respect, then you ain't been paying attention. That's all. <laughs>
What do you think of it all, Bart? Well, first of all, Dion's one of my favorite teammates of all time, and I, I've witnessed the master at work. He's one of the greatest marketers of himself, his program, whatever he's pushing. You know, but I thought this was an opportunity for Dion to be able to lead by example, to show his players, because you're going to have to deal with this as a player. And I think this is Dion reacting as a player, not as a coach. Because, you know, as a player, we have to deal with this. I mean, hell, I lived in this market where they put us all in clown cars on the front of the New York Post, and I had a little <laughs> media band. But that was me as a player. I feel like as a coach, you have to lead by example and show these players how to deal uh, with when a, um, a reporter takes it personal, right? Because now you've given this guy power. You've upped his, his, his profile. And then what's going to stop the next reporter from trying to do the same thing? I mean, we all knew the, the guys that we had here that had it out for the Jets. And when I was in Baltimore, we had one. And I'm sure that if I ask Dominique right now, he knows exactly who I'm talking about, who yeah. wrote the columns to, to, to always mm -hmm. say something negative about the team. But this is an opportunity. So if Dion did this, me knowing Dion, he did it for a reason and a purpose because he doesn't do anything, you know, um, impulsively. So this is part of his bigger plan. What it is, we'll figure out later. But this just opens the door for other guys to criticize him because they know that they can get the profile. And everybody's trying to move from the small market to the big market. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> yeah, there's one thing that every football team and every football coach, every team wants is they want an enemy. And they want a reason to say that it's us against them. They want something to galvanize their, their unit around. And right now, I think this is just strategic by Deion Sanders saying, look how they treat me, how they treat us. There's them. Let us focus on us. There's no time for infighting when we have, and there's no time for complaining or any of the things that distract teams from being their best self. Like, that's what we do in football. And I guarantee you that Deion Sanders is using this to galvanize and motivate his team, whether we like it or not. Paul, you, you were the one who began this whole conversation so well on this show yesterday. I mean that sincerely. What, what, now that we've had a day to think about it, and you hear all the perspective here, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I don't know what Dion's reason is, but I, I think he's come off looking very poor in this, very petty as well. He ended up going after a guy for the Denver Post that, that I doubt three players on his football team have ever heard of and have probably never read. It's one thing to go after a big figure where you can galvanize everybody, but I, I don't think this is a motivating force. It's hard to come up, it's hard to use a, a guy that nobody has ever heard of as your enemy. And I think this is just really between Dion and the writer. I mean, those are the, the things that we heard from Shannon, those are, those are cheap shots, but that's what Columnists do uh, in big markets. Uh, they take cheap shots. You know that, Bart. I mean, the New mm -hmm. York Post uh, has made a reputation and a, and a great living uh, for, for its owners uh, out of taking cheap shots at everybody it can, uh, except I just think uh, Dion just picked a fight that he didn't need. At, at the end of the day, Dominique, does any of this, will it make a difference beyond interesting conversation? It, it, it is certainly interesting, and, and, and it is particularly so because it's Dion Sanders. Does it make any difference beyond that? I don't think it makes a difference. I think that college football coaches have always wanted to control and sometimes in many cases do have the leverage to control their local media market. I think because Dion is at Colorado, Colorado is a national uh, team. So it doesn't matter. He can try to silence these local uh, media members as much as he wants. They're not going to be quiet, which is why I do think that it works. He has big figures. He has um, Stephen A. Smith. He has Paul Feinbaum, Feinbaum talking about him right now. He has the figures to point to to say, no one likes us, they don't believe in us. And I think that we're falling right into the trap. I guess it's not a trap. It's good television, so it's working for us, it's working for Dion, it's working for the players. The only person it's not working for is the poor columnist who's not allowed back in the locker room. But How much